It's called Apollo. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> On the tail end of a particularly Catholic visit home, Stephen inflated a balloon inside himself and decided on his pup name, Apollo, the god of light. Back in LA, he'd raced to his apartment from the nurse's office where he worked, fire hose his insides with a douche, and fill a Gatorade bottle with silicon lube. Boys were waiting. Fists were still exciting, but had gotten easy, if he was being honest. <laughs> Last week, a man got his whole foot in Stephen's colon lining, soft earth on bare toes. <laughs> Apollo, whose body this really was, more god or dog than man, yelped and whimpered, pawed the airhead lancing back in ecstasy. Sometimes, at the nurse's station or on the volleyball court, Apollo would reflexively <laughs> bark. In bed with his new husband, his dog, his daddy, his sir, the tired boy growled his contentment and nuzzled his godhead in. They slept that way until the sun rose. Doesn't transformation always happen like this? Gradually, then, all at once, expanding from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Under his nurse tech uniform, blue scrubs, Stephen always wore a chain with a dog tag in the shape of a bone. What beast deity do you hide under your work shirt? How wide do the insides of yourself extend? Maybe it isn't something for a mother to understand. <laughs> this line of men, here for the ritual, this hunger to be everyone's good boy, to be the best boy, to be. Apollo. <laughs>